Dear friends, dear colleagues, uh, I'm very pleased to be uh, here today at uh, Euronco 23, and I'm very happy to have uh, Dr. Loyo with us uh, for discussing the tour uh, study that has been presented at ASCO. So uh, thank you, Jan, for being with us. You are an oncologist, medical oncologist at uh, Institut Gustave Roussy in Paris. Um, thank you very much for uh, being with us today. Uh, let's go directly into the details of uh, the TOR trial that you have presented. Can you tell us uh, again what was the, um, the materials and what was the design of, the, of this study? So thank you for the invitation, Benjamin. So THOR was a phase two trial that investigated erdafitinib, so uh, pan-FJFR uh, terrorism kinase inhibitors in metastasic ureteral carcinoma. So as you know, uh, we reported a phase two trial that showed that this drug is quite active in patients with uh, HFR3 mutation and fusion, and this alteration are, were found in around 15, 20% of, of patients. So based on this data from the phase two, erdafitinib was approved in US and 17 other countries, but we need a phase two trial. So TOR was the confirmatory phase two trial. In TOR, there is two different court, court one, court two, and I reported the, the court one. So in the court one, patients were previously uh, treated with two line of therapy, one or two line, but that include at least one immune checkpoint inhibitor. So the majority of the patients were, I would say, in third line after platinum-based chemotherapy and in immune checkpoint inhibitors. Mm -hmm. So the patients were randomized into erdafitinib or a chemotherapy of choice could be docetaxel or venfluinid. And the primary endpoint was over survival. Initially, we planned to enroll 280 patients and we did a planned interim analysis in January this year. And we showed that actually erdafitinib improved over survival compared to chemotherapy. The, the overall survival improvement was around 30%, is, is it true? Yeah, so the median of survival was 12.1 months in the erdafitinib group versus 7.8 months in the chemotherapy group. So it reduced the risk by 36%. 36. And of course, is it significant between the two, the two arms? Great. Um, so this study was really discussed during the ASCO. We had a lot of uh, interaction and debates. Um, what do you think about uh, erdafitinib as uh, the main treatment for, for this patient? Where would you suggest to, to use erdafitinib right now after the, the results of the TOR study? So the take home message first is that we should test all the patients with metastasic ureteral carcinoma for HFR alteration. And that I means for us, as a urologist, sorry, yes. you're, you're yes. on, we need to uh, realize and ask to our pathologist yes. to uh, assess for FGFR al alteration Absolutely. At, after the, the cystectomy if the patient had a cystectomy. So at least for the patient with metastasis at yeah. the time of this diagnosis. But also I do agree with you, probably for the patient who had surgeries or cystectomy with high risk of relapse, I would suggest to test this patient for FGFR because he's likely to relapse. And so uh, having this result when the patient is diagnosed with metastasis is, is very important. So coming back to your question, I think the level of evidence we have is level one. We have a phase three, positive phase three trial. And uh, so erdafitinib will be uh, probably um, approved in third line, I would say. So after platinum-based chemotherapy and an immune checkpoint inhibitors, and it will be part of the standard of care in many countries. It's, it's my feeling, of course. And um, we are also awaiting for the results of the EV302, uh, which is assessing uh, Amfortumab plus pembrolizumab. Um, what are your expectations after these results? If it's positive, where would you see erdafitinib? And if it's negative, how would you manage this yeah, patient? It's a very good question. So EV302 compare EV combined with PEMBRO to chemotherapy in first line. So if this trial is positive, I think for the patient with FGFR alterations, clearly uh, erdafitinib will be the standard of care in second line because the patient, it, my experience, experience will be fed up with the uh, an IV treatment. So carbo gem or cis gem and would prefer probably an oral drug uh, in second line for this patient who have disease progression on EV pembro. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, last question that just uh, came in my mind. If you, uh, which uh, mutation are you looking for when you have a patient with a, who is metastatic? And what would you do if you have not only FTFR positive, but also other alterations that are positive? Which, how do you choose the drug you're going to give to the patient? So you mean if you find a PI3 kinase yeah. a mutation, for example? Exactly. So we don't know so far. Um, probably the, the code driver are important to identify the patient who are more likely to respond to erdafitim, but so far we don't have any strong uh, results to yeah. support the use of erdafitim in some subset of patients or not. So if you find a FGFR3 mutation on fusion and some FGFR2 fusions, clearly the patient is eligible to uh, erdafitim. I have to remind uh, everyone that there was a, a very specific panel of mutation and fusion that make the patient eligible to erdafitim. Okay, thank you. I think uh, it was very clear. Thank you very much for your time and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you so much.